Quizza, wacky and deranged Omarosa. But when Sarah Sanders was asked about his attacks on Omarosa, she did everything to avoid saying her name. Uh, that this individual with the fact that this person liked the author of this book. Her favorite formulation for evading the O word. This individual, the lack of integrity that this individual has shown. But I guess this individual beats being called low life. She's a low life. Sarah Sanders finally broke down and said it one time. Respect to Omarosa. This individual reminds us of that woman. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Mrs. Manigo Newman's famous first name may have been plastered on the screen, but it was screened out by the press secretary. Uh, that this individual, Genimo, CNN. That woman. This person. New York. All right, we've got so much more straight ahead in the newsroom, and it all starts right now. Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me. I'm Frederica Whitfield. We continue this hour with fresh attacks today by President Trump against the nation's former CIA director, John Brennan, tweeting this morning. Has anyone looked at the mistakes that John Brennan made while serving as CIA director? He will go down as easily the worst in history, and since getting out, he has become nothing less than a loudmouth partisan political hack who cannot be trusted with the secrets to our country. This week, the president revoked John Brennan's security clearance, the move prompting more than 70 now intelligence officials, including top former CIA directors, to come together with a statement warning the president that the country will be weakened if there is a political litmus test applied before seasoned experts are allowed to share their views. Brennan unloaded on the president again last night. He's drunk on power. He really is. And I think he's abusing the powers of that office. I think right now this country is in a crisis uh, in terms of what Mr. Trump has done and is liable to do. And Trump may not be stopping with Brennan. He has ordered the White House to draft more clearance cancellations of current and former officials, all of whom have been publicly critical of the president or tied to the Russia investigation in some way. CNN's Ryan Nobles is in New Jersey, where the president is staying and tweeting uh, this weekend. So, Ryan, what more can you tell us? Well, Fred, it seems pretty clear that uh, despite the criticism that the president has received by this decision to revoke the security clearance of John Brennan and then threaten to revoke the security clearances of other former intelligence officials, that he's not backing down in any way. He's defending the move, continues to do so on Twitter, and he's actually getting a bit of cover from some Republicans on Capitol Hill who view this as the president's ultimate right, and if he wants to do this, it's certainly within his power. But that's not stopping many of these other former intelligence officials from uh, to rushing to defend John Brennan. Brennan in this case, and arguing that the president is making a mistake, and he's making a mistake on a number of levels because they believe not only is he essentially taking away this wealth of knowledge that comes from someone like Brennan and then if ex extends to other people, uh, but he's also creating an environment where they feel uh, that uh, others will feel uncomfortable to be objective in their viewpoints as it relates to some of these big issues that are happening around the world. Let me read you part of the statement that these uh, intelligence officials, these former intelligence officials put out, more than 70 of them. They said, quote, all all of us believe it is critical to protect classified information from unauthorized disclosure, but we believe equally strongly that the former government officials have the right to express their unclassified views on what they see as critical national security issues without fear of being punished for doing so. The country will be weakened if there is a political litmus test applied before seasoned experts are allowed to share their views. So they're making the case that the president is actually hurting his own national security interests uh, by limiting their views, even if they uh, disagree with him on some of these big issues, because in part it is their job to provide that information uh, from an objective viewpoint. Uh, Fred, even with that criticism, though, it's pretty clear that the president uh, isn't changing his mind when it comes to this, and he continues to say uh, that there could be more security clearances revoked in the future. Uh, so that's something we'll certainly keep an eye on. Fred. Ryan Nobles. Thank you so much in New Jersey. All right, joining me right now, former ambassador to NATO, Nick Burns. All right, Ambassador Burns, good to see you. What, what was your reaction to the president revoking Brennan's security clearance? It was entirely unwarranted. You can't imagine any president going back to Richard Nixon, even imagining that this was a possibility. You know, we have a free society. People have rights to speak up, especially distinguished former officials like John Brennan, the former CIA director, for the president to try to intimidate officials 
And then you read in the Washington Post this morning that they're just about to take away the security clearances of seven or eight other officials, and they'll do that periodically over the next few months. It seems anti-democratic. It seems very authoritarian. It seems to also be targeted on people who criticize the president for his inactivity, his inaction in responding to um, the Russia hack of our election, the whole Russia investigation being carried out by Mr. Mueller. And that seems to be interference with justice. So the president's response to the criticism of his, you know, removing of clearance, he says, you know, I'm not silencing anybody. If anything, I've, I've given now. The security clearances of seven or eight other officials, and they'll do that periodically over the next few months. It seems anti-democratic. It seems very authoritarian. It seems to also be targeted on people who criticize the president for his inactivity, his inaction in responding to um, the Russia hack of our election, the whole Russia investigation being carried out by Mr. Mueller. And that seems to be interference with justice. So the president's response to the criticism of his, you know, removing of clearance, he says, you know, I'm not silencing anybody. If anything, I've, I've given now John Brennan a bigger voice, more freedom to speak. What do you think about That's his explanation? That's not the point. The point is intimidation. The point is intimidation of any other official in the government of discounting what the president's saying or, or perhaps even giving contrary advice to the president. If you take a revered figure like John Brennan or Susan Rice, uh, she's supposedly on this list, or Jim Clapper, he's also supposedly on this list of officials whose security clearance might be taken away. I think the real object here might be to silence people within the U.S. government. In the civil service, and I was a career civil servant, obviously we have an obligation uh, to serve the commander in chief, but we have an obligation to speak truthfully and to uh, disagree privately behind the scenes when that's necessary. It doesn't look like this president can countenance any contrary view. And that's, uh, that is deeply disturbing, and it's a very unwise way to lead. So uh, with something like 70 now, uh, you know, intel officials, uh, many former, you know, CIA directors signing on to this agreement saying, you know, hey, if you're going to revoke clearances, revoke ours too. But then what about those who are actively, you know, working at CIA, FBI, et cetera? Is it your concern that this will, this threat that the president and the White House has, will effectively intimidate and just might change the way in which they do their jobs? They may be, a, some officials might be more reticent about how they file reports, what they say uh, as it pertains to investigations because they're afraid that their clearances will be pulled because the president is effectively doing that. I think that is the larger concern here. Nobody uh, argues with the fact that the president, as commander in chief, leads the government. He has the right to take away people's security clearances. But in the past, we've only done that. And the president has only done that, or cabinet agencies have done that, when someone has, has violated the rules uh, by which you get a security clearance, or you've proven that you're incapable of uh, maintaining confidentiality. That's not the case with John Brennan. And here you have the president going after a sitting official of the Justice Department. And if you take away the security clearance of a sitting official, you prevent that person from doing their job. You effectively put them out of a job. That's intimidation. That's an abuse of the power that the Congress, by law, has given to the president. Uh, you wrote on Twitter that, you know, we are witnessing, I'm quoting now, you know, witnessing the rise of an authoritarian presidency. Uh, you, you spoke, uh, you know, of that already. But then, you know, I wonder, in your view, what uh, can or will stop the president from the method in which he is, um, you know, carrying on this practice of, of threatening security clearances being pulled? It's hard to escape the conclusion that he is an authoritarian figure and that he's trying to govern in an authoritarian way when he has so little regard for the rule of law, when he's done so much publicly on Twitter to try to interfere with this pursuit of a, an investigation by Robert Mueller. That was the point that I have made and that many others have made. And it's a very, very dangerous moment when the president seems to be so intent in interfering with justice there are consequences for that, and I think 
uh, that the people who can stand up to and who have to are not just individual citizens like myself, but members of Congress, particularly of the Republican Party. They're the ones who have the ethical obligation to stand up and to criticize the president, to counsel him privately to cease and desist from these efforts to interfere with the rule of law. Ambassador Nicholas Burns, thanks so much. Thank you. Still ahead, protecting.